It's time to rest again, Rebels, to snuggle up, slow down, and let go of all the thoughts and questions left over from your day. If you want, take a deep breath in and release. Now is the time to let your mind wander. Up above the sweeping mist of hazy clouds. Up above the birds swooping through the cool air. Up, up, up to where the sky expands in every direction. The air is cool and soft as day becomes night and each breeze brings a faint lullaby. If you can, close your eyes and imagine that you are traveling in your very own rocket ship, zipping through swirls of deep purple and blue. Or you can just hang on to me. My name is 8558-HACK, and I'm a very gentle asteroid. Asteroids are like miniature planets that orbit the sun. Most of us are a couple of billion years old from when our solar system first started. But we still know how to have a good time. Come on, I'll show you around. As we flit and float, the moon nods and gives us a shimmery smile. Hello, moon. There are so many constellations of stars flickering and fluttering. Hello, stars. Rebels, do you ever wonder where all these sparkling specks of light come from? Do they really hold on to our wishes? What can this magical space tell us about life on Earth if we listen and look close enough? These are some of the questions my dear friend Margarita Hack asked. Yes, I'm named after her because she taught us so much about the universe. Margarita was a brilliant astrophysicist and rebel who studied the skies for years and years. Her mind was full of questions like, how do galaxies evolve? How far are the stars from each other? What can we learn from starlight? Let's take a little trip back through time and space so we can visit Margarita in Italy. Margarita is born in a place called Via Cento Stelle, which means 100 stars in Italian. As a child, she loves exploring the city of Florence, which is stunning, with lush gardens, winding streets, and the cool waters of the Arno River running through it. But little Margarita has her head in the clouds, literally. When we first see her, she is kicking up a cloud of dust, running fast, and then launching herself as far and as long as she can. She stays in the air for one, one thousand, two, one thousand, Three, a long time before landing. You can see Margarita is quite the athlete. And as a young girl, she loves practicing the long jump and the high jump. She also loves cats. She has one cat named Cecchino, who sits on her lap as she studies for school. Margarita doesn't particularly like school, but if Cecchino will sit on her lap, she'll stay reading 
for hours. Her father brings her pieces of Parmigiano cheese to give her energy as the day melts into night. By the time Margarita is in high school, Italy is under a fascist regime, which means the government is very cruel to people and often punishes or hurts people just because of the way they look or think. One day, when Margarita goes to her science class, her teacher is missing. Margarita finds out that the fascist regime forced her teacher to leave the school just because she was Jewish. Margarita is shocked and angry. She doesn't understand why some people discriminate against others, especially when she looks up at the sky and sees how everyone on Earth is just a teeny tiny speck in this magnificent and huge galaxy. In the autumn of 1940, Margarita starts at a university and goes to her first literature class, which she calls an hour of pointless chat. So she switches to studying physics. This is where things get exciting. She steps into her first astronomy class and feels like the skies are opening up all around her. She learns about stars and planets, comets and meteors. You may know about famous constellations like the Big Dipper and Aquarius, but there's so much more out there, like dwarf planets, cosmic cliffs, huge clouds of gas and dust called nebula, faraway galaxies, and even things we can't see at all, like dark matter and dark energy. Margarita is fascinated by it all. She learns to use the telescope at the Arcetri Astrophysical Observatory in Florence, zooming in to see the night sky up close. And let me tell you, on Earth, it may seem like the stars are these teeny tiny dots of light, but stars are not tiny. They're huge, burning balls of gas, like the sun. They just appear small because they're trillions of miles away. I myself happen to be a couple of miles wide, but asteroids come in all shapes and sizes too, and we are constantly shifting and orbiting. This is another reason Margarita loves studying about us. Everything in the sky, just like on Earth, is always moving and changing, evolving and growing. One of Margarita's first important discoveries is that the light energy, or luminosity, of specific stars can tell us how close or far they are from the Earth. This is a tremendous help to so many scientists and astronomers. Margarita also researches how the universe is constantly changing and studies the galaxies that exist outside of the Milky Way. She becomes the first Italian woman to direct an astronomical observatory where she gazes out into the ever-changing skies. She has such love and respect for all of us sky folk. She marvels at how the moon orbits around the Earth, revolving in sync with the ocean's tides. She dedicates her life to understanding this magical 
glimmering canopy up above and sharing its beauty with everyone on Earth. In fact, as Margarita says, we're entirely made of elements created in the hearts of stars. That means the same things that make stars sparkle and shine live in humans too. The calcium in your bones and the iron in your blood, these make you human. And they're what make stars burn and grow. We are all connected on the earth and in the sky. And we all have the ability to glow and guide each other forward, no matter how dark it gets. And so, Rebels, let yourself float into your own galaxy of colors, comets, and maybe even some asteroid and star friends of your very own. The air is cool and calm. The night is just a whisper and sigh before the sun rises again. And you are loved and protected in this glorious, wide open universe of dreams. This podcast is a production of Rebel Girls. It's based on the book series Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. This story was produced by Joy Smith with sound design and mixing by Bianca Salinas. It was written by Abby Scher. Fact-checking by Joe Radigan. Narration by Mina Kim. Thank you to the whole Rebel Girls team who make this podcast possible. Stay Rebel.